ladies and gentlemen, welcome to round two of the East Coast series. Coming to you live from Hockenheim. But to with me tonight, my co-host, Mark Duggan. How are you, Mark? Mark, you there, Mark? Yeah, good, thanks, John. Looking forward to a epic battle around here. There's been some great um, official races around here all week, and the vets have put on a good race last week. As well, so it should be a good night. And it should be like, like before I go to the track map, we might just jump straight to the poly. Um, if you have a quick look at that, Toddy Haynes is on pole for Taipan, followed by Jamie Dyke and Corey McFarlane dropping in there in third with Adam Haynes in fourth, Dylan O'Shea, Shira O'Shea in fifth, Blake Wallboy sixth, Michael Whiting seventh, Damian Johnston in eighth, Logan Barnett in ninth, and Harrison Dengate in tenth. But when you really have a good hard look at it, the top 30 drivers are separated by one second. Yeah, that's incredible, isn't it? It's so competitive and so many good drivers out here. Oh, and then I think the next second takes you from 30th all the way back to, I think it was 55th. So that that's pretty scary when you start to think about how close these guys all have been with their driving, with their qualifying. And there's just quality driving drivers all the way through the field. Yeah, I've seen anything like last week. It was a battle and a half just to find where the battle was or to stay on top of all the battles. If you're following along at home, don't be scared to jump into our Facebook chat and say good day and let us know who you're supporting and who you're following. And we'll see if we can give them a bit of a shout out along the way. Might just have a quick look at the track. So for those who know, Sorry for that, we just lost our, our chat there going into the track map and I'll just double check we've got that for the quality as well. Uh, and we still had our chat for the quality, so that was all right. So sorry about that, the, the chat on the track map. Thanks, Jude, for bringing that one up. For those who don't know, my computer had an absolute meltdown last week. Um, it spread immensely with the 61 cars. For those who watched at home and have seen seen me continuing on <laughs> and we managed to get something up. Um, so this week I'm actually promoting in again Cox computer <laughs> and all the images and sounds and stuff are all coming from the camera system. Um, ben Anthony has I thought it was a joke said he was doing it, set up a GoFundMe page and thanks to Cataclysm Computers and the iRacing community between Vets and the East Coast boys. I have a new computer coming which should be here within the next two days to help me get these broadcasts up to a very good standard. So I'm very humbled by what Ben's done. I'm, I'm, I'm very touched by everyone who's, who's offered support and help. And yeah, I just love our, our iRacing community that we're in. I'm just really touched by everybody. Just goes to show you, like, no matter how competitive and how heated it may get on track, once the race is done and somebody needs help, yeah, all the boys know, you know, exactly what to do and how to chip in and, you know, give help no, 
matter what way it is, financially, emotionally, you know, it's just a great community to be a part of. Yeah, it is. It is. And I know those Bulldogs are already out there spreading the stuff about passing me on lap 10 on last Thursday night. So, yes, you did, Dave, so I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> um, I did learn a valuable lesson on Thursday night that you don't go for the gap at the start line in a 300k race. Can't win it at the first corner, can you? No, nah, and it's always nice to get across the start line before the car's damaged. Um, so tonight our race is a little bit different. We are racing to a timed race, something that we haven't done very often in the V8 series is that, that Ben Anthony puts on. Um, so tonight's race will be 75 minutes, um, which will be a, a completely new concept for a lot of people. So it'll be interesting to see how the guys manage their, their race field strategies. Yeah, I'm not, I don't think I've ever actually done a timed race. It's always been a set amount of laps. So, yeah, it will be interesting to see how they manage their fuel and tyre strategy over a similar five period. Yeah, well, you've basically got to average, because they've got 75% fuel tonight as well that they're running with. So, you know, you've basically got to average your lap times. So it's rather difficult when you start the leaders and get stuck in what I've been that traffic and stuff, your lap times change. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking it should be roughly 50 laps to a stint. Um, sorry, 50 laps to the race, and it should, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a challenging one to work out, but I think it should be about roughly 50 laps, I think, out of, my, out of memory. It could, it could go up to 50, 60, depending on how fast you are, how slow you are when you work it out, how fast you are. Um, so a rough idea from what I've been able to work out that you're going to need about 121 litres to get the job done. That's just a rough guess off my abacus. Well, I'm sure your abacus is pretty close to being correct, John. Uh, usually, usually we have Nate over here giving us all the fun facts and and. Um, But cut a long story short, um, yeah, it's going to be rather interesting to see how we go tonight with this. So um, we fumble our way through like we always do. Um, it's good to see Andrew Galley having a holiday down down on the coast. Sending us a message, wishing his boys good luck. And Dave Balder posting about the PRA spreadsheet. Dave never boasts, does he? Nah, nah. I have been told apparently PRA have a very awesome spreadsheet for doing all sorts of weird and wonderful fuel calculations. So we've got about another 10 seconds of free practice before we get to the grid. And yeah, I think we're in for a blockbuster. I really think that these Haynes boys up in the front pack, they're going to be under a lot of pressure from McFarlane and and War Boys. It'll be interesting to see how Dengate and a big shout out to the people's champion himself, Mr Jamie McKnight, a little bit further back in the grid. It'll be interesting to see how he goes. And of course there's plenty of battles that are going to be throughout the grid that we'll try and bring to everybody. So I'll just click a button here and see if this works and we'll bring the grid up. Oh look at that, modern technology. And there's the grid. So of course Haynes on on first and pole. And then we have Jamie Dyke Corey McFarlane from Sim Sports, Adam Haynes from Taipan, Dylan O'Shea, Harrison, sorry, Blake Warboys, Michael Whiting from Fishy, Damian Johnston, Logan Barnett, Harrison Dengate. We have after that Hayden Harrison from Taipan. We have James Shistanoof from Emu. And quick click here, we've got Paul Young from PRA, Troy Maguire, Blake Delaney, Chris Ireland. Lockhart Brownlie, Rob Carmichael, Jared Bailey, Josh Daly, Dave Coleman, Josh Drage, who I'll talk about a bit later, he's changed teams. Jamie McKnight, Michael Dumbrell, Smart, Richie Davis, Shannon Gore, Good, Can, Scotty McCune, Frank Hodak, Timmy Nichols from Pecky Performance, Maddie Stewart from Hypersonic Racing, Ryan Van Ree from WKMP. Then we've got Bradbury, Quayne, Burns, Loveridge, 
Andrew Archer, Reg James from Emu. We've got Tyrone Anderson, Steve Kennedy, Paul Hayes, Braden O'Loughlin, Blair Van Ree, Andrew Hoffman. And we then finish off with Roy Clark, Dylan Gray, Troy Sipple, Bradley Baldwin, Mark Howard, Mark Peck, Max Lumson, Nathan Cook, Jake Anderson, and our safety car driver tonight is Shannon McMillan. And I'll take a breath. Lucky it's a small group, mate. <laughs> Lucky we can see all the cars. <laughs> I'm doing better than last week. So, well, congratulations on last week. You just showed that the show must go on. Uh, Nathan will vouch. There was a few words when he said under my breath. And we are about a minute from go here. So this will be very interesting. If this race, as we said before, the first three corners never ceases to amaze in terms of accidents and people getting through. Um, we're sort of with Cam's computer. I don't have in race comms at the moment. So hopefully we can try and keep up to when we have safety cars. If you're out there, Ben, chuck it in the race control notes. Um, yeah, so this is getting a little bit exciting. There's another 60 cars on the grid. Yeah, just looking down through the names, like in the, just in the top 15, like it's, you know, you look at any of them names and any one of them boys can win this race. And even looking further down, you know, down to, you know, 24th position, 25th position with Christian Smart, like, all these boys can win this race. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, you've got to have that level head. Like, like we said just before, you don't want to, you're not going to win it in the first quarter. Yeah, to go green, lights are red. And we are away. As we look, there's a lot of movement in the background. We're trying to focus on the leaders at the moment. As Haynes gets clean line through, followed by Corey McFarlane and Jamie Dyke. And hey, Adam Haynes, O'Shea, Warboys, Barnett, Michael Whiting dropping back a little bit as we battle it out now into the second corner. And yeah, we've got to, get, got to get this exit out of here, correct, to get the pace. But Toddy's away like a rocket here. Yeah, that was a great start from Todd. And we've got someone spinning in the background, but I'll come back and look at those a bit later on. Um, looks like. Brown's, Brown lies dropping back a bit there on the list. Um, and Andrew Ritchie as well has dropped back a little bit, I think. So I'll try and catch up with that focus on the front, though. McFarlane's caught up a little bit here, so he's obviously doing something with that slip screen. And relatively clean start considering the size of the grid. Absolutely. And Toddy Haynes, Corey McFarlane, Glenn O'Shea. Jamie Dyke dropping back there, going back quite quickly. There's been an incident behind there as we come into the stadium section. I'll we'll try to pick up what's happened. We might do a quick tailor made replay on Jamie Dyke. Coming into the corner, he's coming too hot. Oh, they've touched. It's been taken with the Blake Warboys there. Dengate's then been collected and out into the grass. That's not a very good start for the WKMP boys. Another one off in the grass there somewhere. Oh, and a massive hit there on on Jamie as well, so that doesn't look good for Jamie Dyke. As we go oh, back very, up front. But very messy very quickly there, didn't it? Yep, I think that was the commentator's curse, Mark. He said they were all got away clean. <laughs> Stick my hand up for that one. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll try and just do a quick recap as we go through the parabola we begin with our leading drivers. So we've still got Toddy Haynes in front with Corey McFarlane, Dylan O'Shea, Adam Haynes, Logan Barnett, Blake Warboys is still sixth. Jamie Chaston has moved up five spots to seventh. Paul Young is eighth in up five spots. Hayden Harrison is in ninth. Harrison Dengate in tenth. And Troy Maguire in eleventh. And for those following along at home, Jamie Knight has moved up nine spots in the fourteenth. So it's a great try from Jamie. We might just have a quick look where he is. We're going to tie Byrne back in 25th, but he's up 18 spots. Paul Hayes up 20 spots. Look, Tony Dyke still sitting there on the side there, so we haven't got a safety car yet as far as I'm aware. And I'll just quickly have a look back a little bit. So there's McKnight. McKnight's under a bit of pressure. He's quite tucked in behind Paul Young there. And oh, sorry, not Paul Young. 
with Hi Chris Island and he's also got Michael Dumbrell giving a lot of pressure on him there so big shout out to Jamie and boys up front have just gone over the line he's still got a good battle with Dylan O'Shea he's basically dropped back from the front too a little bit and he's under pressure from Adam Haynes and Logan Barnett and then the chasing pack of war boys Chastanev yeah, Todd Haynes showing a good turn of pace and has kind of stretched out the gap to nearly a second at the moment. Yeah, it's a good start. Um, we might just have a quick look back through the pack at some of the other groups. Uh, Jared Bailey's gone into the pits. So I'm not sure what's happened to Jared. Got the safety um, car on track. Sorry, John. Safety car is out. Okay. And as we move along, safety car is out on track. So the safety car tonight being driven by Shannon McNellan. So Shan drove last week. And today's playing safety car bingo at home. Shan was the one that put it in the wall at Imola. So we'll see what he can do tonight. So this safety car will be interesting because we're only on lap three. So it's probably a bit early to try and do a top up if you're in the front group here. Um, so I'm interesting to see down the back there with how many of the boys just try and play the top up game as they're going around. I guess for the field this big, if you're buried at the back of the pack, um, there's no harm in ducking in and filling up and rolling the dice to see if it'll gain you a few spots later down the road. Absolutely. Um, Um, yep, so as we see on board safety car here, we might just change the cameras again. So she's a tough track, this one. Like as we were saying before, you've got to be very careful of that slipstream. So Toddy's really got to time his run when he looks at the foot down when we go green. And you know it's it's quite interesting. So in that sense, so let's have a quick look through the through the field. We'll have a look at some of the big movers are. So Paul Hayes is up 22 spots, and Dylan Gray is up 24 spots. Steve Kennedy up 19. So there's quite a few bigger movers down the pack, and there's a few guys that I think have done the dive into the pits or had some damage from that first incident that has dropped back a bit. Some names we're quite familiar with in the sense of of um, Timmy Nichols, um, Damian Johnston's back there, Michael Whiting's back in 42nd. Um, you know, so we've got a few boys that have dropped back a little bit out of that, that incident. Um, Blair Van Rees up 19 spots in the 28th. He's doing really well for his first race back after a spell from my racing. Uh, Nicholas Loveridge is up 18 spots. It's a great start from Nicholas. Michael Stewart from Hypersonic Racing. So big shout out to my mates at Hypersonic. I want to say thank you to these guys very much. Um, 14 spots is up. Ty Burns is up 19. So there's been some big movers down in that backpack for an early for the early stages of this race, Mark. Yeah, some massive gains, and I guess that's what happens when you've got 60 cars on the grid and just as many big losers as there is big movers. Like there's a lot of people lost a lot of spots as well. So all to be gained once this safety car comes off the track. And Dave Kirby wants to chuck in a quick replay of see if I can find the, the Dylan Gray incident. Don't think Gray, sorry, the Jamie Dyke incident again. Just give me one second, guys. And you know, it was a fairly big incident coming into the stadium section. Um, that's a very difficult corner. If you miss your breaking point, you're in all sorts of trouble in there. Um, and it doesn't end, end well for everybody. Um, so we'll have another quick look at that. I think I've got the right one. We'll go back to the tailor-made replay. So you can see there that the, I think it was War Boys that was in the dike. Dean Gate's gone out wide. Poor old Jamie's just sitting duck there as everyone's just come through. Um, unfortunately, it's basically like watching a pinball. It's just well, stuck about. there in the middle of the chase. He's been hit by half a dozen cars there and yeah, it's kind of night over from there for 
Jamie, unfortunately. Yeah, I feel sorry for him that one. And then we might just have another quick look at another replay very quickly before we go back and check the rest of it. So this is Timmy Nichols. I'm not sure what happened to Timmy. I've just got a an incident bar in SDK. He's just overshot the chicane, the um, hairpin. Quite commonly done. And we might have a look, quickly look at another one. And this one is Jamie Dyke again from his onboard view. So Jamie getting in there a little bit tight, a little bit hot, rubbing up there and then getting caught out with everyone else behind, banking back up. So we'll go back to live pitches now. Hopefully we have missed the start. I'm about to go green. Okay, oh, green. Yeah. On Toddy, yep. Uh, and Toddy coming through turn one, coming into turn one. We are away. So, so hopefully we this we're in trouble. So Toddy getting away nicely there. Corey McFarlane dropping in behind him. Dylan O'Shea nicely staying in this train as well. Everyone basically getting no notice to stern. And we have a drive through penalty for Ty Burns with an accident with Timmy Nichols. So we missed that one. We went through some of our replays. coming down into the hairpin and into the spritz curve. They weren't making any big moves there. I think these boys were trying to settle in a bit. Everyone was, everyone was really well behaved down there, although a few little touches here and there, it's hard to avoid it down there. Yeah. It's hard to believe we're nearly 10 minutes into this, into this racing, into this race already. So, and of course, safety car will throw everybody's fuel cups out of the window as well. And Off the, the original start, Todd was able to open up a little bit of a gap, but Corey seems to be right on his hammer at the moment. He is, he's doing really well. I'm, um, We've got another drive-through penalty for Chris Island with an incident with Rob Carmichael on lap one. So obviously, as I said, with 60 cars, it's hard to get over everything all the time. So we've um, missed that one as well. So I'm not sure what happened, but there's a drive-through penalty for, for Chris, um, which is you know, one of those things you don't really want in the 60-car field where everyone's bunched up. No, and like you say, it's hard to pick up every incident with a field this big when you're trying to watch the front of the race as well. Oh, absolutely. And it looks like Adam Haynes is making a move. No, he's pulled back in there. Nicely tucking back in. And Logan Barnett and Blake Warboys looking like they're about to get busy in there as well. So they're all sort of fighting quite hard for space. Too many of these front boys are, are ready to make make it any big moves just yet. The ball boys has a quick look there <laughs> on Barnett. Yeah, it's interesting watching the, um, the two big long straights. You get a big compression at the end of the straights of the field, and then it kind of extends back out like a Gordian again. It's, it's quite interesting to watch. Boys are definitely playing for keeps. We might do a gyro, we might do a lap with Toddy Hayne. Sit back, listen, and enjoy.
And that is a lap of the Hockenheim outer circuit. And that stadium section is just so technical to get 100% right. Absolutely, and not only that, it's uh, that onboard footage just showed how precise Todd is with his throttle application out of that head, and I didn't hear not one little bit of noise. going around and being more than willing to share my telemetry because you know, my accelerator is going up and down like a yo-yo coming out of there trying to control the wheel spin. Yeah, that's a controversy for another day, isn't it? It's, um, <laughs> it is. it's a minefield, that one, and um, it'll be interesting to see how uh, I race and deal with it. Yeah, well, they're the ones that have to deal with it, so... Luckily for us, we can sit here and just watch, which is nice. Um, yeah, for those that know what our, my standard of eye racing and driving is like, it's um, at least in my worries, so to speak. I thought everybody was saying Marcus Ambrose was going on back. <laughs> uh, I've heard so many macro jokes over the last two weeks, it's been hilarious. Um, someone's even made a Facebook page dedicated to it, which is putting up hilarious videos as well, Take, taking the fun out of Mike Corliff and um, Mike Bryan. Yeah, I did see that that, that post. That was uh, yeah, quite funny, but funny on that side of things, but not funny if you've got people you know, driving with an underhanded advantage. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I, I do know, well, I know myself, with WK and P with Blake, like I know he works bloody hard to do setups and get the car where he wants it. And he works hard to to drive as fast as he can, even though he's sitting back in six at the moment. And um, you know, the last thing you want to hear is there's somebody doing something that's not legal, and we don't know if it's legal or not legal. It's up to I race to determine that. But, but someone doing something that's making it difficult for him to compete with those people. It'll be interesting. The um, PRA faithful out there are starting to get a bit, bit toey with us, Mark, because we're not giving Dave Baldock much love. So we might just have a quick look through where the PRA Mantra Alliance boys are. So a big shout out to them. Darryl, Darren Shannon is back in 51st. So Darren, Darren is down 23 spots, and so he's been caught up in one of those instances in the early laps. Come up our list here. I miss people, so I apologise. Roy Clark. So Roy Clark is using the series to perfect left foot braking. In front in 36 at the moment, up 13 spots, so that's a good start for Roy. And Reg James, another one from Bantry Lines, but the new boys. And he's running. 32nd up 10 spots and it's Paul, Paul is sitting up, Paul Young is sitting up in 8th spot and he's up 5 spots, another one for the BRA show and that's where they're all at, Tim and, and Dave Baldock, I don't see no Dave Baldock on the list there, Mark. Uh, Dave's not there, I can't see him, but we've got Dave. So, well, so I'm trying to work out where Andrew is on the list. Uh, was Andrew in there tonight? Um, yep, Andrew Ritchie. So Chastis, Scott's teammate, co-driver, which I want to call it. I've been told to use. He's in there as well. He's lost him again. <laughs> um, too many names on this list. Um, he's doing reasonably well as well, so. Taylor made replay. Troy looks like he's cooked it coming into. Oh, it's too wide. She's not going to fit into there. And, and oh, lovely little tap of his teammate. And a bit of congestion behind. So a little bit unlucky for Troy. Probably getting squeezed out by the car on the inside more than anything. But we'll leave out the race control back days as well. That's what we need to do Andrew 
Richie. Richie is up in 16th, he's up 10 spots back to mine. Yeah. So it's such back. a big list to try and <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. pluck a name out of, isn't it? And there's a lot of new names in there as well, so it's um, quite difficult to get in there and find them. Apologies to anybody if I've missed anybody there. And Warren Davis as well. So we've got a big representation from the VRA boys. Warren Davis, he's out on track there. He's doing well. He's down 19 spots, but he's down 46. So he's still going around. And yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll jump back up, check what's going on up front. As we hit the 20 minute mark. So Toddy Ains still doing really well, driving, driving quite good. Getting a lot of support there from Sean McNamara from the Nine Fivers. So it's good to see Sean's watching the stream. And oh, you missed that. A little bit of sideways action there from Todd. And Man just talking about Sean, he's been driving incredibly well on the officials. I saw him on top split last night, get a good result. Congratulations, Sean. There was a bit watching that race last night. It was a bit of a battle. Cam and I were screaming, screaming and switch that race um, as we were setting this the set up tonight. So, you know, at the moment the start of the start of the broadcast, we were um, broadcasting remotely tonight through someone else's computers. Um, we're still quite bunched up, Mark. I'm, I'm really impressed with the fact that everyone else is still hanging on. Yeah, the top three are kind of got. Six, five cars that are really tightly bunched. I think that's going to be the, the race right through the field, just going to have micro bunches right through the field. Definitely shaping up as the way we're going with it. Um, I did say there was some good news with Josh Strage. Jump on with Josh, so I think we're going to see what the big news is. Josh has left the performance and come across to the WKMP during the week. Um, so yeah, Josh doing a fair bit of work with Blake and Ash Barella, who's not here tonight because he's playing a cricket semi-final, 220. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the big news I was talking about early on with the degree. Just jump back up. Teams going with that lead three group, so Dylan O'Shea is still sitting in third. Camp, so you can see he's chasing down. Got him trailing in front of him, and Toddy Haynes in front of the race. So if you are following along at home, don't be scared to give a big shout out, let us know you're supporting. And we'll get back. We might drop back to Logan Barnett. Logan Barnett is sitting in fifth, chasing down Adam Haynes in fourth. That's what we sort of Mark was saying. We've sort of got the one, two, three, then we've got this next battle pack with Adam Haynes, Logan Barnett, Blake Warboys, James Chistenov, and Paul Young. And a bit of a gap back to Harrison Dengate from there. I just noticed uh, the front group that just is going to be coming up on some lap track at to see how they all navigate uh, lap cars. Let's see if I can that track there. Sorry. Um, that's alright. And yeah, so lap traffic is always going to be the real issue around this track, particularly when you get into that stadium section. It's very difficult for that traffic to make it easier to overtake in that area. We've got the left right turn combinations. But as we come through the Parabolica, heading down into the Spritz curve, it looks like Corey's starting to be a bit more stable than what Todd is, so it'll be interesting to see if Corey makes a move soon. They all seem to, from the outside looking in, they seem to be looking after the tyres. Well, I thought I had a couple of slides here and there, but generally he's been driving the car pretty straight, so don't 
don't know what his tyre condition's like, but he's still driving to a pretty good stand. Yeah, it's Hugh Wallboy's making the comment that um, Blake must have front end damage, which I'd like, probably be surprised if he did after we saw the incident with Jamie Dyke on that one. So he's probably waiting for a good chance to get in into the pits and see if he can get any repairs done. Yeah, if he's uh, got some front end damage, he might be back in the straight to me. Yeah, he's winning, sitting in the train, so to speak. And yeah, I would hang on to the guy in front. That's probably not allowing him any pressure on him. Uh, so we're coming up to that first lapped car very shortly. There's Braden no Lachlan been this really good, he's had an off track and he's dropped, dropped him down quite quickly. Um, so really yep, he's definitely had an off track, lost his front end damage there, and that looks like it's coming into the stadium section as well. He's back on track, he's got a bit of a Big shout out to um, Ben Anthony, mate, you need to get your boys to uh, update their SK, SDK driver. There from Taipan Esports. I'd like to learn another team manager how to do their job. Man wearing more than one hat, is he? We all know Taipan Esports boys. They're, um, and does all their car design support and does a lot of their back end help to keep it going. Shout out to Mario Riali and a big thank you to Mario as well. The um, Pipe Sonic boys are awesome, that's all I'm going to say. And good to see you back next week, mate. And Travis Hunt has jumped on and he's just throwing out a bit of support for Paul Hayes. So Hayes he was doing quite well before. Um, see if one balls up to now. Uh, just bear with us because we've got massive for 60 drivers. I think Paul's sitting in 23rd, he's up 22 spots. Uh, no, 24th, he's sitting in 34th, up 11, four ways. Blair Van Rees in 24th, up 23 spots. That's a fair drive from, from young Blair. Um, these boys here will be starting to think of fuel soon, I would imagine. Steve Kennedy pulled into the pits and allowed the uh, lead drivers to go through on challenge. So that was good work. So. Yeah, sometimes it's easy just to get out of the way and um, take the fuel stop a little bit earlier and a little bit later. I know in officials I tend to go as long as I can and wait till the guys come around for the lap before I do not get stopped. Um, it's a lot easier to get past by the lap by the um, cars lapping you when you're sitting in the pits. It's quite right. It looks like these front, front three are just slowly picking out the bigger and bigger gap to pack the eye. Yeah, it's you know, 2.4 seconds back to Adam Hayes from Dylan O'Shea. And then we've still got that battle pack and what drop back and have a look at what's going on there. It's Logan Barnett. So Logan Barnett sitting in fifth. War boys in sixth. Um, you can see they've got that little gap. Um, Haynes, gap so Adam Haynes is sitting in front of this, this little battle group here for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. We've got Chastity in there, and then Paul Young's trying to hang on to the back of that. And then we've got another two seconds back to Harrison Dengate. So he's tries to pass him on the inside there. And that was Lockhart Brownlee, and looks like he locked it up. No, it's good to going in there, which has allowed Dengate to come back through. And it's allowed Dumbrell, Smart, and McKnight to get past Brownlee as well. You just can't afford to lock them up on this track. You can't afford into that hairpin to get it wrong. It just costs you so much. Yeah, I haven't done many laps here because I haven't been driving much at all. But, yeah, getting that... And breaking right into the hairpin is critical. See Todd Hayne coming in the pits. Yep, his first one rolling the dice. 
Farland takes over our race lead. And Farland O'Shea, Haynes, Barnett. Adam Haynes, sorry. Boy boys, Chaston if Young. Toddy starts dropping back down through the pack. Boy sits in the pit getting his field service. And he's gone in on a lap about the 29 minute mark. So I thought you say we'll be looking at another stop in around about 60 minutes, 55 minutes. Of course, uh, as I said at the start of the, the night, tonight is a timed race, so we're not racing laps, we're actually racing to a time, so when we get to the 75 minute, 75 minute mark, I think we then get the white flag and we have our last lap. So of course, race control is very, very busy watching this timepiece, knowing Ben is, is all over it all over the stuff and keeping it in theme with, with being in forest in the south western parts of the, the German countryside. Benny, Benny always loves his, his good wee pots. And just for Mario, we'll have a quick look to see how the Hypersonic boys are going. And we might just run back through the pack as McFarlane goes again. So he's gotten another lap, lap in. So all these boys have gone again. So it looks like a interesting choice of field strategy by Toddy Haynes. So we'll see where he uh, works out in a couple, a couple of laps time for the undercut. It's pretty much what he's done as the undercut as the race leader. Um, very interesting way to do it. So quick run down through the pack. Those playing a little bit home. Jane McKnight is sitting in place, he's up 13 spots and behind him from Hypersonic Sport. Hypersonic Sim Racing, we've got Michael Dumbrell. So Michael's doing quite well, he's hanging on to Jamie. In the 11th spot, they're all up 13 spots there. Christian Smart, of course, is sitting behind Jamie, he's doing really well in 12. You could say that, that group would be the main group to look out for. And Scotty McHugh from HSR, he's running back in 17th, he's up 15 spots, so he's done quite well. And I'll just try and make my way down the list to see if I can remember some of the other people, find them. If I don't find any more, I apologise, because as you can imagine with guys going into the pits, that list of drivers moves around quite a fair bit. And the last bike that I could look at, of course, is Michael Quayne, another one of the best drivers of my mates and sons. So Quayne, he's doing quite well. He's still going around, he's in 51st, he's lost a few spots, but plenty of time to make him back there. And we'll just jump back up front. Farland should about to finish this next lap, so we'll see. And they've gone again, Mark. Just look at the Todd Hart. Todd's sitting in around about 20 minutes at the moment. Be interesting to see how much time he's made or lost on fresh tyres and being stuck in the pack as compared to what Corey and that are able to do in open track. That's the risk you take, isn't it? You, 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 you tried that strategy of going at the earlier looking for an undercut. I mean, the reading's right. Leading the race, I've got a question. That strategy. Um, so, yeah, it's just a case of probably trying to balance your tyres or trying to balance your fuel. Or, but you've got to be so careful with coming back out around that, that mid area in 20th. Because as we know, these boys. Uh, where the top 30 cars qualify one second apart, so these boys are all very competitive. It's going to make hard work for getting past. Yeah, exactly right. You've got to you've got to have an idea where you're going to pop back out, how much time you can afford to sit behind somebody. It's a uh, it's a lot of stuff to think about on the fly. That's right. Let alone the, the brainstorm of brand gear changes break I'm thinking about what the guy next year is going to do do next year um, yeah it's amazing how you do the race this long and you, know, you walk away in a pool of sweat yeah that's why I brought my wife and my buddy let's have a quick look why these boys go again into another lap so they're definitely Definitely running a different strategy. We've dropped down to where Toddy is. So he's down in 24th, so 
Sydney sitting right behind Blair Van Roo. So Blair moves up. Up 24 spots in 23rd. He's got his race back after a hiatus from sim racing. He's doing quite well tonight. But Toddy's definitely keen to try and get past him. But Blair being the New South Wales state karting champion that he is, is probably not going to make it easy for him. Fresh tyres should win out here. Yeah, easily. For those playing bingo at home, it's good to see Blair in the Commodore. He's entered the right car tonight. He's in the habit of entering, mistakenly entering into the wrong car. They all, they all drive the same, apparently. I don't know. Do you, do you think they do? What, what's your opinion on that, Mark? To be honest, I've never driven the Commodore. <laughs> I don't even own it, so I wouldn't know what it drives like. <laughs> I, I just find it funny that the setup work on both cars. It's all... oh, I find that part funny, but I, I just, I, I just find, you know, seeing the, I, I just find the. Um, the kids is for psychological. I just, I just find that the Stang is just that little bit looser. Um, but like I said, with my driving abilities, it probably doesn't mean anything. And someone's had an off and wants to have a quick look at the Taylor made replay and see what's going on. See who it is. Oh, no, uh, just narrowly averted danger there. Oh. Uh, is Nathan Cook in there? We want to see quick back. Is it Toddy? Where's Toddy again? Uh, I missed that one. It looks like Blair was going into the pits, was he? No, I think um, it was a... Uh, I think it might have been Kennedy or one of the M1 cars just coming out of uh, the last corner onto the straight. Uh, OK, yep. There we go. We might just quickly look up the front. So, Corey McFarlane, Dylan O'Shea, Adam Haynes. They're still leading out the charge up there. Um, We've got a little bit of lap traffic in the middle there as well. Um, not sure who that is. But Corey's definitely pulled away a little bit from Dylan. Um, that gap has increased a little bit. And then as we said before, lap traffic can make everything to everyone. So interesting that that's getting in the way there. And they're going to go around again. So this is interesting, I still Still a bit perplexed by the strategy from from um, from the Type N Esports boys from Toddy Haynes in that respect. So we'll go live again to live pictures. Oh, he's still coming around. Is he going to pick this time? No, he's going again. Of course, he's following along at home. Gives a shout out. Let us know he's supporting. Um, try and get some information up if we can. I do know there's 60 drivers that are struggling with it because Max Lumsden gets a penalty for exceeding 20 incident points. So, poor old Max, a little bit early in the night. When you're only 37 minutes in, we're only halfway through the race. Blake Warby's just making a nice move on Logan Barnett and the airport. Yeah, he's got the job done. He might Um, just trying to set up the seat in this DK, as you probably don't appreciate sitting at home. <laughs> as I said before, we're doing this by remote on a computer, so my text on my screen is a little blurry, not just because this is being screened by remote to me, and then I'm driving this DK for our change of pictures and everything else, so um, and we're still getting used to doing this series of 60 cars as Blake. Flashing lights there, a bit of flat traffic getting in the way. And Logan definitely keen to get back at him. This is a real tight battle pack, this one. Yeah, very easy to match. Oh, absolutely. We might um, James Chester. Far chase camera. Excuse me. That from a different angle, different view. Um, probably. Some of these in-car camera views are different to the views that these guys are used to seeing. Um, so we want to 
adjust too much on in Ken's eye racing. So, but you can sort of still see in this more fish eye approach, you can see that James is just hanging on to Logan in front of him. And Blake and Adam Haynes are absolutely toe to toe there. So you can see Blake's keeping the pressure right on him. So he's doing well if that car is damaged, he's doing well to hang on. He's doing a great job and he's actually turned up the wick a little bit at the end of this uh, stem on these tyres and fuel. And that's the thing too that, that people don't really think too much about. Um, and that's, you know, when these boys do these car you know, they're setting this car up with 77 litres on board to start the race as Paul Hayes, Dengate. Aiden Harrison, Jamie McKnight, Dumbrell Smart go into the pits. Um, you basically you're gonna set it up so that the car still handles looks after the tyres when you're low on fuel as well. You, know, you can have a quick setup when the car's heavy on fuel, here we go. Blake making a move here. And Adam giving him a bit of respect and a bit of room going for the undercut. And Blake was coming out. We've got a drag race on here. Mike Adam's going to get the job done. Yeah, Adam got a great exit there. Blake's just put a little bit of a twitch on, which didn't help him. And you can just see that little bit of top speed at the end of the straight was all he needed. Yep. And it's, that, it's that ability to be able to think quick, like Adam did there, you know. Don't fight him going in, just hang back a little, little bit and then just come back at, at him by getting inside him. That was a very smart, intelligent drive. And they're both diving into the pits now. So where's Toddy? Toddy Haynes, our race leader, our pole sitter. Or was our oh, race leader? I, He's back. He set the wall going into the pits, I'm not sure what happened. Blake, you said. up as an accident so um not sure what's happened there whether someone's got past him or not um, I'm sure that will be more damage it wasn't a big hit he just locked it up I think lost yeah. the front end going into the pit lane to scrape the wall and Todd's gone back into the pits so Blake Delaney is now a race leader this one he got a safety car so. yep we do Oh, we've got so, Troy okay. McGuire stranded on the uh, pit straight by the look of it. Troy. Uh, yeah, Troy's standard. Yep, good pick out, Mark. Doing better than me, mate. <laughs> I've, I've got all the stuff in front of me highlighting it to you. So, we are back under safety car. Good chance to have a rethink. Of course, the big winner out of this now is Toddy Haynes again because he's managed to top the car up. We've also got Tyrone Anderson stranded on track by the look of it. Uh, oh, I've lost Tyrone, he must have. Looks like he just towed back to the pit. Towed back, yeah. Um, let's just have a quick look through some of these other cars in the field. Uh, I'll change my camera back. And Hayden Harrison from Taipan Esports, he's sitting in 10th at the moment. It's kind of interesting to see. War Boys, he is sitting in 6th after that pit stop, so hasn't lost out too much out of that stop. Um, we might just have a quick look to see what sort of damage there is on that car. Uh, cameras over at the left front. Looks reasonably straight. Left rear looks straight, and right looks straight. No, Blake looks, well, looks pretty straight, so he must have done too much damage when he came into the pits there, Mark. No, it wasn't a big hit, it just caught me by surprise when it happened. It's one of them eye opening moments. <laughs> as I'm sure it was for Blake as well. <laughs> yes. 
So if you are following along at home, give us a big shout out. Let us know how you're supporting. And we'll try and give you an update on how they're going. As you're aware, we've got a massive field, so the leaderboard list doesn't jump around too much while we're following the front. Um, and we can try and give you an update of, of how your mates are going. Um, Jamie McKnight's moved up into 15th. Michael Dumbrell's in 16th. Christian Smart, sorry, Dumbrell's in 14th. Smart in 13th. Dave Coleman from Fishies into 12th. Toddy Haynes is still sitting back in 11th after that early stop, but he would be on the same fuel strategy now as the rest. Um, Blake Delaney's just gone into the pits. Blake and Corey McFarlane back to our race leader with Dylan O'Shea in second, third. Chastity in third. Adam Haynes fourth. Paul Boys fifth. Paul Young into sixth. And Harrison Dengate into seventh. Um, our big movers would be Scotty McCune from HSR. Scotty's up at 16 spots, sitting in 16th. That's a pretty good drive from Scotty. You should be happy with that. How he's going there. The boys have bunched up again, so opportunity to attack. Uh, Andrew Ritchie, he's up and sitting in 18th. Um, Damien Johnston's in 21st. Rob Carmichael's fought his way back up to 22nd. It's not a bad drive from Rob to get back up there. Yeah, Jamie uh, and Johnson. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, he was sitting in about 55th after lap one, after a lap one incident. So that's a pretty good comeback for Damien. He's doing quite well. Um, Blair Van Reason, 31st. He's still up 16 spots. He's a big mover. Andrew Arch is up 17 spots. Nick Loveridge is up 20 spots in 20th. So a few of these boys are doing quite well tonight. Quite impressed with how they're going. Um, just jump back up the front just to see what that safety car is doing. As we come down into the curve, so I've still got a little bit more time. Timmy Nichols from Pecky Performance is in the 27th. Um, Roy Clark is sitting in 45th. He's up four spots. That's a fairly good effort from Roy. Troy Sipple is in 47th. Frank Kodak is 46th. And big shout out to the main man for Pecky Performance Racing, Mark Peck. Good to see him out there still going. Sitting in 49th up five spots, being chased there by Quainy. Doing well, Steve Kennedy in 51st. We'll just check that safety car again. No, he's still with us at the moment. Um, yeah, these boys are all doing really well. It, it's good to see we've still got the bulk of the flick. The bulk of the fleet. Paul Hayes will love that one. I'm talking yachts. We've got the bulk of the field still running, which is really a good effort. I think we've only lost, I think, from what I can work out, one, two, three, four, five, six cars out of the, our starting 60. So that's a fair effort considering we're 47 minutes into this race and we've got another 28 minutes to go. So as I said before, it's a timed race. And Ben Anthony's got the clock running, sitting there in race control, he's loving what he's doing, young Ben, he reckon Ben would love the train part, I reckon that'd be his most favourite part of his clock, continuously having those trains going around waiting for 75 minutes to tick over, as we come round for another lap under the safety car, of course safety car being driven tonight by the one and only Shannon McMillan, Filling in for Richie, and scoring at the cricket for Bash. So, so Todd Haynes dropped back. He's in, sitting in tenth spot. It wasn't that long ago we were wondering whether coming in early, getting them fresh tyres, he was going to extend his gap. But it's uh, worked in the complete opposite way for him. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was interesting just how everyone else seemed to have a lot more fuel. So I'm not sure whether there was a tyre wear problem or something else going on there that, that, that forced him in, but it's, um, they yeah, kind of feel a bit for Toddy. He sort of qualified well and that sort of first third of the race, he was literally dominating it very well, so. Uh. And at this level of racing, it's so hard to make your way back through field at any sort of rapid pace it's just picking off a car here and there oh absolutely and 
know, especially when you start getting the safety car bunching them all back up again as well, which means that everyone starts fighting for the car in front of them. Which keeps the pressure on everybody. And it's good to see Dave Baldock still out there watching. He's been very quiet tonight, which has got me a bit worried that he's concerned about his prequel time for vets at Daytona. I'm sure he'll let you know about it. <laughs> uh, good old Dave. Sean McNamara calling for Toddy to have some big sends. It looks like the safety car is starting to pull away. So let's see what Shen can do. I know Shen and Rich have been doing a fair bit of practice. Seems I keep the pressure on them. Not to stuff up. As he's off into the ground, he's off into the sand. Shannon, no. <laughs> right on call. Could have done it better and rolled it. Made a mess of it, but he managed to get it back. And safety car ducks in, and we go back to our race leader, Corey. When would you go, Mark? It's been so long since I've raced, I wouldn't have a clue. Save that replay for Shannon. <laughs> oh, don't worry. He'll be told. You definitely have to go about, I reckon I'd be going about now. It looks like Corey's going to hold him a bit more and go on the apex of this turn. No, he's holding him even longer. This is an interesting strategy. We'll make a big traffic jam at the back as they all bunch up as Corey takes off as we now go green flag racing. We are back on lap 29. Time is ticking away. And it'll be very interesting to see how Dylan O'Shea and Chas to move. Keep the pressure on them failing here. Yeah, Chas is a big winner out of all this. He's made some, some great gains. Dave Bordock saying Dave's a legend. <laughs> uh, let's have a quick look back through. So we go back. We've got Dumbro in 14th, Mike 13, Colin in 12, Christian Smart in 11th, Hayden Harrison has uh, played no Lockman's had an incident. Roy Clark's had an incident. We might just go to the Taylor Made replay and see what's happened to Roy. And coming in to the spritz curve. Oh, Roy, he's braking there. Managed to flick it out of the way. That was someone else involved, not Roy. Roy's caught up in the end there, sorry. That's, yeah, a little bit unlucky for everybody involved. We go back to the front. Corey's pulling away a little bit here from Dylan. Chasty's dropping back just a little bit, but they're all still within a second of each other. And Warboy's in fifth, Young in sixth, Dan Gay in seventh. That's been a good drive from Young Harrison. He's got himself up three spots into the top ten. Logan Barnett still sitting back in eighth. Toddy Haynes has worked his way back up to ninth now, so Toddy's coming on the back of this train here as he comes out wide, coming into the hairpin. Toddy so he can gets this done, he does, he gets it done on Logan. Luck gets it just pulled up in time to try and get inside Wall Boys. Sorry, inside Dengate. As Barnett comes back at him. And he drops him behind the pack there again. So he didn't quite get the job done, to get a good exit. Getting an exit out of that corner is really important that you get that right. Section. Just like pressure here still, so it's 
like Tony Haynes all over the back of Barnett still. As we come over to start finish line, start back to the line. 53, 54 minute mark. Time is starting to tip away, Bill and Chase are in the fastest lap. And Martin just chucks regular on Chase in the line 2987, which is our fastest lap in the race so far. So that's fairly good driving from Dylan. Dylan driving quite well to try and catch up to McFarlane, keeping the pressure on him. Chastity dropping back just a little bit there now, so Chastity's still under a lot of pressure from Adam Haynes, and Warboy's sitting right behind Adam, keeping pressure on him as we all come into the Spritz curve again and head back down the outer ring back straight. So this Why pack here... Sorry. No, you're the quiet achiever sitting there all going, just chipping away like he always does. Well, young, young, he's always there and about, isn't he? You never underestimate Paul. He's under a lot of pressure from young Harrison, though. Corey just had a bit of an off there, but he gathered it back up just as quickly as he lost it. Lost it? Yeah, just one who did throw up all the dust. So that's that one. Um, these guys are having an epic battle. We have 20 minutes to go. As we cross the line again, McFarlane, that gap's closed back down. Dylan O'Shea's hanging on the down. Chastis hanging on to O'Shea. Lap times, Chastis is the quickest one on that lap. Followed by Haynes and then War Boys. So these boys in this mid pack are actually running faster than our lead two cars at the moment. Adam sitting right under the bunter of pump of chassis there, down yep. the inside. Yep, getting the job done. Just can he get away with the exit though? And nicely done by Adam Haynes. And of course, getting a better drive out. Chastity's coming back at him. Oh, oh, bit of a touch there. Wall boys getting in a bit of a panic to get out of the way, thinking something's about to happen. So a little bit of rubbing. Rubbing's racing, as they say. As we still go too wide. And we're still too wide. And Chastity pulls away. Wall boys definitely trying to get into this battle. Boys under a lot of pressure from Paul Young. Harrison Dengate keeping the pressure on, on Paul and, and Logan Barnett and Toddy Haynes keeping the pressure on behind that. Here comes Paul Boys again having a look on Adam. Gets the job done. A little bit of a tap, I think. It's a bit difficult to tell from that angle. Young is going off. Paul Young went off track. Just trying to find that. Uh, he came back on, so Young is all right. That's allowed Barnett through. And Harrison Dengate through. So just try and see what happened to Paul Young and watch we go the Taylor made replay. I think he was just trying to avoid or anticipate something going on in front of him. Yeah, just got on the gas and tried to stay out of the way a little bit. Let's open the door up to a few of those lads. And we'll quickly get back to our epic battle as we go through the hairpin here. And this time it's War Boys and Chastity going for a drag race down the outer back straight. This is some epic, epic racing to be honest. We're going to go too wide again into the stadium section. Warboys nicely just blinking inside there. This is some epic stuff going on. And Warboys starting to pull away a little bit. We'll see if we can get it done next, next time around. As of course, the slipstream is worth a fair bit around here. But as we've seen all race tonight, people are able to get that draft down the straight into the hairpin, but on that inside line, it's so hard to get the power down. Oh, absolutely. As we come back down through the parabolica, heading down to the hairpin. And 
nicely done. Sorry, not the airpin, sorry, that was coming into the Bernie Eccleston curve. You've got to feel special if you're Bernie, don't you? Get a curve named after it. Bernie's always been special if you ask me. <laughs> and this time we're coming down into the Spritz curve into the airpin. So Logan Barnett deep under brakes in there. Looks like Adam Toddy's just got past Adam. Four boys is starting to pull away, so we might just jump up. We'll have a quick look. Something's happened to Quainy. We might just go to the Taylor Made replay and see what's happened to Quainy side by side with one of the WKMP cars. And too wide going into turn one. That never really ends too well for anybody. So we might just turn the keys to that one over to Ben Anthony as well to look at his race control. So not sure. There was much in that or not. And um, we might go back to Chasty because Chasty's still under pressure from Dengate. And uh, Corey McFarlane is still under pressure from Dylan Chay. So these boys are really having an epic battle tonight. There's battles everywhere, of course. I'm trying to get over most of them. Um, and hopefully we'll have a little bit more luck when we... next week as we start improving year and yeah. got all them joys of installing everything for yourself to do <laughs> so yeah. I don't envy you <laughs> yeah I know I know it's going to be fun and it was interesting spending some time with Ken Beacock last night he's sort of given me 101 tips and 101 different ways of doing things better so um so I thought I was doing okay. I'm sort of watching Cam blast his way around through SDK and Ogs. It's like I've got a bit to learn. And again, that's a great thing about this community. Like, you know, people are always willing to, to help you and teach you. And, you know, whether it's in the car, or out of the car, like, there's just so many good people right throughout this, especially the V8 community. Like, you know, like I said before, like, on track, it can get spicy and a bit heated but once the race is done like, there's so many good people you know, willing to put their hand up to help you mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, as I said earlier on the broadcast I'm very humbled by, by the support that was, was thrown my way so um, definitely definitely got me quite good time there we go Ty Burns just took over another 20 points definitely got me um very chuffed and, and very honoured to say I'm, I'm part of this community. So, yeah. Um, so, we'll just jump back up the front. We'll have a quick look through a bit further back. So, Jamie McKnight's still sitting in 11th. He's up 12 spots. We'll have a quick look at the beautiful livery of the United States Sports Car. We'll see these in finance. And we'll take that access to 20 points. And as we jump back through, Jamie's up 12. His partner in crime, Christian Spark, he's up 12 spots as well in 13th. Um, he's been a very quiet achievement, not really very much from Christian. Um, Scott Wool. Look around the front of the so Christian doing reasonably well. And of course, Scott is quite the front. Scotty's up 18 spots. That's a great drive for the Ivers on the team. Dancing up that many spots, but of course, Michael Dumbrell, so we've got a bit of a hypersonic train, which we see quite often during poly. These boys are working together to help each other. That's what the teammates should be doing. Um, just jump down. We've got Nicholas Lovridge, he's up 19 spots. Um, Bradley Baldwin's jumped up 27 spots. It's a great try from Bradley. Uh, Andrew Archer, shout out to Andrew, up 15 spots. Claire Van Ree still going around, he's up. 19 spots. And Mark Howard's up 21 spots in 30 seconds. That's pretty good. Max Lumpson. I'm not sure that this is Max. Back over here, track Max. Um, was up 20 spots. He's up 19 spots now. Uh, Jack Anderson's worked his way up 18 spots. That's a good try from the Elka Holden car. Doing quite well. Uh, Ryan Van Rees. Gordon's behind him, Gordon Clark's up eight spots. Becky's worked his way up 11 spots. Another quiet achievement from Becky tonight, staying out of the way. 
quiet so we don't know where he is. Um, yeah, so it's quite a few big movers we've got there tonight. We might jump back up the front and see how Dylan's going. He's still hunting down Corey McFarlane. Still nothing in this. And of course, these boys doing quite well with all that traffic coming into play now as well, which will make things a bit more interesting. Poor old Jamie Dykes car looking very second hand. Yes, poor old Jamie. He will gain the young call after that, that one incident. Poor, poor fella got left stranded. Basically, used as a pinball as everyone else came through in the corner. So, yeah, it's actually good to see him out there because I know quite a few drivers, particularly as we go some fishes and things like that, they would pack it up and go home straight away. Yeah, it's good to see him continuing on. Big shout out to all the fishing boys, too. We've got quite a few of them in there tonight. Um, you know, it's great to see, see the fishy boys getting behind the East Coast series. We've got the Frog Leap Juiced Boys in here as well. They've got quite a big contingent racing in the series now as well, so it's great to see them come on board this season as well. Um, just you know, sort of going from regularly 40 cars to 60 cars is a big leap. It just sort of shows that the standard of this series is making everybody take notice and everyone wants to be involved. Absolutely. It, you know, ben puts on some great racing, but it also just goes to show you that the thirst for quality racing in the um, high racing VA community. Yeah, oh, that, that's what you want. You want to be able to have a quality race where you can trust the blokes you're driving around with. As much as I pay out Dave Baldock, I know I can, can drive around him and you know, have the guys beside him. And I know he's not going to punt me off as much as he wishes he would. Um, he wishes he could. Um, yeah, so it is It is a good community out there, and, I, you know, and everyone wants to do clean racing. But the, racing the racing in the back half of Split 2 of Vets is just as competitive as the boys in the front half of Split 1. So I can tell you that from experience. Yeah, I think, you know, like the racing that we see in many leagues that have a race control is you know, a lot cleaner than what you'll get in officials. Oh, absolutely. And Baldock well, wants to know when you're back, Duggo. When you're back in the beds. I'm back at the hospital tomorrow morning. And hopefully get the all clear and then, yeah, kind of get my way back into the rig and hopefully make a bit of a comeback. Yeah, and I've just been out there and I don't know if you can come back at 58 years of age, but anyway, it's, um, it'll be well worth the effort to get back in the rig and like I said, the vets racing has always been a lot of fun and competitive, you know, like, it's like, just like 18 year olds racing for me. <laughs> Absolutely. I was just going to say, you always want to work with the back half of Split 2, you can, you can take on board up for me. <laughs> I'm sure he was scared now, I told him that. We've fallen off a horse before, again before we know it. Dave knows how to get the elbows out. Yes, he definitely does. Uh, let's drop back a little bit. So War Boys is on his way back to third, but he's still under a lot of pressure from Chastanoof. Still under a lot of pressure from Dengate. Harrison driving quite well tonight. He's made his way up five spots. And Logan Barnett's not saying goodbye to trying to get on the podium here. So these guys are falling to that third spot. And of course, Toddy Haynes, our pole sitter, he's starting to catch up to the back of his group as well. So with seven minutes of call, seven, make that uh, five, two. Um, yeah, seven minutes to go. I was right. Dan Gate making the move on Chastity here. And. Barnett was thinking about getting a look inside that as well, so these boys are still fighting quite hardy. They have seven minutes to go. I reckon Blake may be just safe for third, I'm not going to call that. But I reckon those other spots for fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh, I think they're going to be very hot and contested over these next couple of laps. I'm saying that Dylan O'Shea is now only 0.4 of a second behind McFarlane as well, so 
Yeah, interesting, like Blake got past Chastity with a fair amount of, not ease, but he, he did get past reasonably easy and then I thought he was going to kind of gallop away from this group, but he hasn't been able to make any ground whatsoever, really. No, he's definitely been in that situation. And we've got another one of our East Coast Vets drivers come and join us. How are you, Matty? Matty McMillan. Boys, how are you? How you, Mark? Hey Matty, how are you mate? Good mate, good, that's good. Sitting back enjoying the race. There's been some great battles tonight. It certainly has, mate. Uh, they're a little bit more bunched up than uh, this last one. It's been out of the way. I'll just jump back up and have a go at Dylan. It looks like Harrison's about to throw the ball down the plate here as well. So that third spot. Was Dylan keeping the pressure right on for him? Anyway, I know that Lloyd Clark had an off, but he might just stick with his bunch up the front for the next five minutes. Um, of course, Dave Bulldog getting in behind Chasty, and Luke Collins jumped on to say good day as well. So good day, Luke. Start to get a few more accidents down the back. In the group. A bit of fatigue broadcast with him. Uh, he came in last week and had a chat with my channels in the safety car. And then as soon as we went racing again, he's good to get out. Uh, and we're just going to jump back and he's dropped off a bit here. Looks like he's stepped up again. Thank you. So we'll go back to this battle pack. So. Warboys and Dengate look like they've pulled away a little bit from Chasty. Uh, Toddy Haynes is coming back through that pack a little bit as well. So we're starting to put a bit of pressure on Chasty as well as we have 11 minutes to go now. So he is definitely, definitely getting into the business end of the night. What's Harrison going to do? Harrison's known for a big dive. No, he's going to tuck in behind Blake. Sure, it's 11 minutes. I, I thought it was four minutes. Four minutes, yes, sorry, it's 11 minutes. <laughs> it's one minute, one hour and 11 minutes down and four minutes to go. So yeah, we're definitely in the last couple of laps now. So we have to hope we've got the first right. We have to hope we've got enough fuel to keep going. And of course, as we saw in the Porsche series last year when they went to Le Mans, everyone got the fuel strategy wrong in the fuel. Looks like he's going to hang on here. But then he may come back at him. And Chasty definitely is doing what he can do. And then he half a second back. And then he may come back to the Toddy Haynes. So this has been an epic battle. These guys have had their elbows out. They've kept them clean. And it's been exciting to watch. Yeah, it's been great driving from all these boys. It's a uh, credit to all of them. They've just stuck at it, stuck at it. No one's done anything stupid. Been some good passes, and yeah, like just a pleasure to watch these boys go around. Absolutely. And we've got a audience question. Um, it's nice to hear Maddie in commentary. I've owned him lately as well from Dave Baldock. Maddie? It certainly has. Okay. <laughs> Can't give him that. Oh, I've got to give credit where credit's due, mate, I think. <laughs> ah, true. And just while we've got through this last lap, Jamie McKnight's up 11 spots still sitting as well. Uh, good little fight back from Jamie. He's kept the clean the night, out of the way. Um, Jamie, well, he's got Christian Smart, and some of the boys got him too. Don Rell sitting behind them. We've got Michael Whiting from Fishy. So those boys have been in a, quite a good rumble pack as well as they've been going through. Let's jump back here. Let's put him down into the last minutes of this race. And Dan Gates not going to let War Boys walk away with this one, is he? Interesting to see if uh, Harris uh, how far he's going to look at. 
from what I know, the way we do things, it's um, pretty much you just go for it. Looks a little bit quicker at this stage. Mm. Well, we kind of under the impression from the left lane it's going to be James Dyke with the plane to the damage that he's carrying. We're going to try to hold the All the others on Harrison there. Chastity's caught right up. These boys battling themselves have allowed the pack back in. Yeah, and that was a uh, slower car coming out of turn one as well. Allow them to knock each other up. Yeah, he's the boys have been driving quite well, Darren. And Chastity having a slight little on the inside there. Harrison's got to get the power down quick here. Has seen earlier that inside line doesn't give you enough boost coming out. Harrison just I think the gonna continue on. So Chasty going for the inside line, Chasty getting it done. Chasty moving up. Oh no, still too wide. No, Chasty getting it done. Oh no Harrison last lap. Oh Unlucky, mate. And Corey McFarlane comes across the line. Our race winner. Well done, Corey. Killing O'Shea in second. Third will be Warboys. Chasty comes across in fourth. Fifth is Logan Barnett. Sixth is Adam Haynes. Seventh is Hayden Harrison. Youngie comes in eighth. Lock, lock, lock up. Brown lie in ninth, still coming through, I think. Get that right. He's already through. And yeah, Harrison Dengate getting home in 17th. Josh Drage in 16th. That's a good comeback from Josh. I think he was well down the order a fair while there. So Josh up six spots. Scotty McCune, of course, I didn't mention him. He was in 12th. Up 20 spots. That's a great drive. Nathan Cook's up 33 spots. Sorry, 23 spots in 33. 33rd, he's done really well. Uh, Jack Anderson was up 20 spots as well in 37th. But really, the drive of the night has to go down to Corey McFarlane. That was a great drive by Corey. Yeah, absolutely great drive, and his car hasn't got a mark on it, so credit to him. Mm. Oh, boys having a bit of fun in the background there. For a smart way, but anyway. And yeah, he's got to be happy with that, Corey. Um, Dylan O'Shea, not overly familiar with Dylan. So I haven't seen too many races with him, but that was a great drive from Dylan tonight too. He kept the pressure on Corey, kept it quite honest. Knows how to do a decent burnout too. Um, and Blake, that's probably a good fight back after the the incident with Jamie Dyke going yeah, into the medium section earlier. Yeah, that was a good comeback from Blake. Top drive from James Chafton as well. Up eight spots, I think. And uh, Jamie McKnight battling back to 10th spot, which is a great drive from him as well, because he was up about 13 spots, I think. Yeah, Jamie's up 13 spots. It's a, it is a great drive from Jamie, I must say. Um, big shout out to the man. The man he calls himself the people's champion. I think a lot of people agree with that at times. Um, 
Yeah, it was another great race, really. Like, I'm just still blown away by apart from that incident with Paris, and we might see if we can go back and look at that if I can find it in in the events here. So just bear with me for a minute, guys. I think it was Todd Hayne caught up with him, so I wonder how much Todd may be ruining that early pit stop because if we look at Corey's strategy, it was bang on tonight. Uh, just, I can't. Yeah, I'm just trying to find it. Sort of a struggle, as you probably appreciate. Uh, it might be this incident, I'll just have a look. No, it's not that one. Quickly have a look at another incident in the Tailmade replay of Ward Clark. Not that one. Harrison Denkate went off the tracks this one here. Here we go. Let's have a look. Very tough to see from there. We might go back, have a look at that again. And move this quickly. And we might just go to Far Chase. So very tough to see there. It almost looks like a bit of a net code. Well, Todd was actually coming in a little bit early there. If you looked at that, Todd was already locked up before he hit Harrison, I think. Yeah, I think he just got a, the right rear on the grass there by the look of it. And I'll just go to Rear Chase and we'll just see if we get a different angle of that. Yep, Will on the grass just clipped Harrison. So, yeah, Logan Barnett was definitely through and Chastity was definitely through. So a little bit unlucky there for Harrison. A little bit unlucky as well for Toddy. They both drove really well to be in that, that top 10 pack that we've been commentating on. Um, we might just bring Blake up in and have a quick chat to Blake. Blake's sitting in the green room. Mr. Warboys, congratulations on your third spot. Ah, thank you. Hello, guys. Hey Blake, how are you? That's a great drive, mate. You um, had a few troubles there early on with Jamie Dyke, but you managed to just stick at it and chip away all race and end up on the podium. Well done. Yeah, cheers. Um, yeah, I was lucky to get away with what happened to Jamie there. He just seemed to want to stick it up the inside, probably where he shouldn't have, and then spun himself across my nose. And then once the car's there, he sort of just I guess you just have to plan it to try and keep going, spin him back around if you can, and yeah. But um, had damage for that first stint, which was slowing the straight line speed and a bit of cornering. So I did a lot of fuel saving. Um, but then with the safety car and stuff earlier, I still managed to stuff up my numbers, so it could have been a bit further up. But um, other than that, it was a good race. Um, I think our little teams finally starting to mix it with these big teams. Good to only see the two two of the bigger team cars up in front of us which is nice and to see the pace that harry's got is quite scary considering he's still on a logitech so I'll watch out for him in the later races once he gets his new gear the um how is harry after that a bit, a bit annoyed uh, as you would be i haven't gone back and looked at it but it sounds like he just got rear-ended and sent into the marbles so uh toddy toddy Got a wheel on the grass trying to pull it up. Nah, that'll do it. That'll do it, yep. So I don't think Todd meant to. I think just getting that half wheel on the grass was enough for him to stop it from being straight and yep. ended up clipping Harrison. So Yeah, once you're on the grass with these things, there's no stopping them. <laughs> nah, that's exactly right. There was nothing nefarious there. It was just kind of a bit of a driver error, but yeah, kind yeah. of really cost... Um, Harrison big time, which is a shame because there was only a couple hundred metres to go. Yeah, yeah, a real shame. Like, he, he had a lot better pace than me towards the end. Um, so, but he was just playing that rear gunner. And that's what he wanted to do. He just wanted to finish up in the top five after last week. And, yeah, he's quite devastated, but he'll bounce back and he'll show these boys. Um, yeah, once he, once he gets his direct drive, I don't think he'll be touchable. Yeah, it's going to be scary, isn't it? He's, well, he's uh, got plenty of pace. The first time I've seen him race, but to watch him um, mix it up up the front there, yeah, he's going to be one to watch in the future, that's for sure. 
Yeah, we're lu very lucky to have him in our team. So, yeah. We came across Harrison 18 months ago in a fairly casual series on a Monday night. At that time it was known as Slideways. It's now known as Full Send, which is a cross-discipline series where they sort of do four races of ovals, four races of dirt, four races of open wheel and four races of um, tin tops over their season. And Harrison was this quick young kid with a high squiggly voice that just kept getting in everyone's way and we sort of thought, how do we get Harrison out of everyone's way? And we thought, we'll make Harrison part of the team. So we asked him if he wanted to be part of the team and he already knew, knew of WKMP through go-karting. Um, so Harrison came and joined us. So we were able to sort of talk our way around him in terms of not getting into incidents with him. And yeah, he's just been a, a great find ever since, young Harrison. He sure has. And now his racecraft and his, his actual racing brain is really good. He's always thinking ahead and, you know, contemplating different things and he's always chipping in, which is good. And yeah, Jamie, mate, I, Jamie Dykes just jumped on the, on the chat. Um, questionable driving tonight by some. He's fairly disappointed. Yeah, I, I can understand that, Jamie. Um, yeah, it was, you basically, you basically ended up being like a billiards break after the incidents going into that stadium section. So yeah, it's, um, would have been a little bit disappointing for you. And um, big shout out to Toddy Martin as well. Um, be good to see you back again, back again next week amongst it, missing the um, NAB car out there. And um, James Ellis, it's good to see you managed to get on after the cricket, mate. So I'm starting to get a bit of a following from the boys at cricket watching my broadcast now <laughs> as well. Um, we haven't got anyone else coming into the green room to join us tonight, so we've got no Corey McFarlane or Dylan O'Shea. So next week we are off to, I believe, we'll be running the Daytona Road Course. We're doing a 300k race there, so we're doing an enduro on the 25th of Jan. So it's going to be another hectic race, that one. Um, I'm not sure. I know in Vets we're doing a day race, so I'm not sure whether Ben's setting these guys up with a day or a night race for that one, but it will be a, um, another great track. I love I love racing at Daytona. Yeah, I love the yeah, all of the rovals, really. And to be doing a track that's not a part of the official calendar, um, it'll be very interesting to see how it mixes up the grid, who's been doing their practice and that sort of stuff. Well... A little bit of a tip for you, Blake boy. All, all, all the vets drivers are doing it this week. Oh, um, there'll be ones to watch out for then. Yeah, yeah, they'll be the one, they'll be the ones to watch out for. Um, and of course, they'll all have the vets fixed set up. So in vets, we race for the fixed set up. So they'll have the fix, they'll have that fixed set up as their their baseline to work from. So and from quali on Sunday night, that wasn't a bad setup. So. Another one of Jamie and friends good ones. Yeah. Um, Corey McFarlane has joined us, so we'll quickly drag Corey in. Before I drag Corey in, anyone you want to thank, Blake? Uh, well, firstly, to everyone that's chipped in to the GoFundMe for John's computer, um, it is greatly appreciated. Everyone has been amazing chipping in with that. Um, the community that we've got is amazing. Um, to Benny for setting up this series, Season two has been amazing so far, and it's only going to get bigger and better. Um, to the series sponsors, TaylorMade Kitchens um, and Taipan. Um, and then, yeah, to our sponsors, Wodonga Carts and Parts, LGK Carts Australia, WKMP Race Engines, Kinetic Industries, Connect Motorsport, um, and TaylorMade Kitchens as well. And we'll drag young Corey up, and we'll have a chat to Corey. Corey, how are you going, mate? Congratulations on, on your win. Thank you. Glad it's over. That was a long race. Yeah, yeah. great drive, Corey. It was, uh, your car looked, it didn't have a mark on it, so credit to you. And you had the right strategy and you made all the right moves and it didn't look like you made too many mistakes, so uh, it was a great drive. Yeah, thanks for that. It was... Uh, 
the car was like hooked up as hell. It was so easy to drive over the stint and very easy to keep the tire life alive. The only problem was was just understeering a little way too much at the um, hairpin. I couldn't really get it turned in there. Yeah, it looked like Todd Hain early had a good dose of speed and was pretty comfortable out in front, but then he pitted and we kind of questioned on the broadcast, he pitted a lot earlier than everybody else and we kind of wondered whether he was going to get a big undercut or whether you guys were going to get a big overcut and it turned out the overcut was the thing that worked. Yeah, it was a bit unexpected because I thought at the start, well, from last week what I learned from Kobe, it was possible to make the one-stop work. And at this track it was super easy to save fuel, just sitting in the toe pretty much. Um, but yeah, I, th I thought he was holding back a bit and saving fuel as well, so I wasn't expecting him to pit that early. And then I just thought, well, I'm good mates with uh, Dylan, so we I knew he was going to work together very well. Um, so we could just press on and uh, I think we boxed at a very lucky time with the safety car coming out. Um, yeah, I expected Todd to be a fair few seconds up the road when we came out. Uh, I think he had an incident with someone. Yeah, he did be coming back out, so that sort of up, upset the chase coming in. Um, anyone you want to give a shout out to, Corey? Yeah, thank you to Send It Some Sports. Um, awesome team, great people. Uh, love chatting to them and it's always a good fun to race with them. Uh, thank you to Precision Performance Setup Shop as well. Uh, really solid setup this week and made it super, super fun to drive. Uh, it's quite annoying when you have to fight the car the whole race. And thank you to you guys for putting on the race and everyone at East Coast V8 League. Thanks, mate. Actually, the um, idea when Ben talked about the series and then when Ben came to me with the idea of doing the broadcast actually stems back from your days with your old team in um, the OSR Dev Series where uh, you boys, yeah. you, you boys did a bit of a shout out and I thought you know what, worst case I could do that for Ben for one or two races till he found a, a broadcaster but he's yeah. stuck yeah, so. that was very good of uh, Daniel Yeaman it was and, uh, yeah, he did an incredible job with all that yeah, so, yeah. awesome time now, well, next week we're off to Daytona and a big shout out, as Blake mentioned just before, a big shout out again to the community with the GoFundMe stuff that Ben set up. Just want to say a big thank you again for everybody for that. And also a big shout out to Cataclysm Computers. Um, they came on board and helped out Ben as well with that one. So a big shout out to Josh Evans there. And also a very big sh thank you to Mark Duggan who's come and joined us again in the commentary box. And it's great to hear your, your health's fighting back, mate. And it's great to hear we're going to get you behind the wheel again soon. Yeah, thanks, John. It was a pleasure to be here tonight. And it was an absolute pleasure to watch you win the race, Corey. You drove exceptionally well. Didn't make hardly any mistakes whatsoever. The car was just as good a nick as when it came out of the pits at the end of the race so yeah congratulations thank you yep and we'll say good night to everybody and we'll see you all again next week when we head off to the wonderful daytona not all